welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> welcome to We're Not Wizards Review. This is uh, today. Be looking at Funko Verse. Funko Verse is from the Funko Games, which is from the little town called Funko Town in uh, the town, the country of uh, Funkavilia. And uh, this is a review just to talk about this game. Hmm. I got a confession to make first of all. I am, must admit, I am not the world's biggest fan of the kind of the whole Funko Pop range. Um, that's for two reasons. Um, the first reason is because um, I didn't realise it was such an amazing thing until it got too big and there was too many released. So it would mean spending a small fortune catching up. And the second thing is, well, I can't say, I'm too excited about having boxed bits of plastic on my shelf. So you can um, imagine that uh, I was met with a little bit, I met this with a little bit of cynicism when I was asked to take a look at it. Because um, there's always something about kind of big companies using IPs, especially film IPs, in order to create them into board games. They're not always been that successful. And in some ways, they could be looked at some kind of cynical, kind of cash in. Often you wonder not if they could, but if they should. But that's beside the point. <clears throat> the idea on Funkoverse is it's a kind of you could call it an introduction to skirmish game. Well, you could call it that, but it isn't necessarily true. The idea is quite simple, is that you will be given series of small little people with giant heads and across maps you will it'll try your best to knock these people out like so in game points points make prizes which means kind of victories a couple of simple actions that you can do you can do some moving um, you can do some challenging you can also bring in a kind of a special ability um, it's all very very simple it's all very very shallow and to be quite frank it's a huge horrific cash in but that's what I'd like to say the truth of the matter is that it's not it's kind of it's a kind of a perfect example of what happens when you have a company that has access to several wonderful um, IPs and decides rather than sitting there and going, okay, what is the quickest way to get this to market? They actually sit down there and say, how do we make a game which people are kind of want to play? And I can see the reasoning behind it because um, when you want to play something like Jurassic Park, you're then going to look around and if you do enjoy Jurassic Park, there's already several other sets which are available. You've got a Harry Potter set which is available. Um, I believe there's the Jaws set which is coming kind of available as well. You've got Batman. Um, if you, um, as you can see here, actually, I've managed to get my hands on the Golden Girls set. Um, and the reason that Blanche is here is because um, she was just wanting to join the rest of the Man Eaters. No. Okay. Um, however, what you do have here is a, um, in terms of trying to introduce you to other sets, the game, as I say, the game itself has got to be pretty solid. And I'm kind of saying this, kind of peeling away the layers of cynicism from myself in the fact that what you kind of do have here is basically a skirmish game that's kind of tried its best to fulfill a, a couple of key components of the skirmish game. And at the fact that in, in the base points, um, the movement itself, the base actions are very, very easy to carry out. You will be moving about the map. 
there'll be areas which um, have got kind of line of sight. Your idea is that you're wanting to, as I say, be knocked down, down your opponents. But then on top of that, you've got some wonderful kind of abilities. Each character, as they play, like Ellie here, has some various abilities that they can play and they can bring in um, during the game itself. Um, as they play the abilities, and it's not just a case of them kind of deciding, oh, well, this move, I'm going to use my special ability and thus clean the field. Interestingly enough, the, um, the special abilities, when you use them, are um, they put into like a, a cooldown track, which is a, an interesting way of controlling several key mechanics in the game. Um, I don't know if you can see, the little Velociraptor here has actually got a set of night vision goggles. Now, every, every pack will come with what you have is a item, and that item will grant that character some additional abilities. However, the items, um, the special abilities, and even the characters themselves, when they get to the point where they've been knocked down for their second time round, will end up on this cooldown track. What's uh, cool about the cooldown track is that at the end of every round you will move your respective tokens, you will remove your respective characters down one slot and that will allow them then to become available to play. It's a nice little additional strategy that kind of gets added into the game as sometimes you're hedging your bets on whether or not you want to use an ability or not want to use an ability. It's entirely up to yourself. Sometimes you use your ability and realise it was the wrong time and then you have to go and have a nice quiet sit down and think about what you've done. On the other side of it, also the uh, with the, the kind of the individual character abilities themselves, some of them have got special abilities which they can grant to other players, um, for instance, uh, which is a nice little addition as well. The main thing about this is that what it does offer is, because there's all these different characters, because they've all got different abilities and it's not just kind of like five or six characters with the one kind of ability all the way through, they've been specifically written for the kind of characters themselves. Like for instance, Dr. Grant has got a kind of a, a rousing speech they can use as an ability, um, <clears throat> which is obviously to, you know, what he what he does. But it's a nice little kind of Mickey take of the character itself. It does mean that there's the because these then become kind of individual characters. It then adds to the encouragement for you to go out and purchase kind of um, extra sets and extra characters for the game. Um, I kind of I would like to say that they kind of stinted on everything else, but they haven't because even if you look at, say, the the gems themselves, these are amber coloured, and yes, if you look closely, they've actually got little kind of amber bugs in the centre to represent the kind of the mosquitoes. It's the little touches like that that show me that they had more than one meeting about this game. The card stock on the game is pretty decent, it's pretty solid as well, even the counters themselves, they're, that's a clacking sound that they're making because they're thick, kind of decent cardboard. Um, there's not just one side to the map, if you flip this over there's a complete other map that you can kind of play. So they're trying to tackle the replayability of it. On the base game itself, you could probably sit down with a couple of, you know, newer gamers or, 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 or younger players and have them playing the game relatively quickly and relatively successfully as I have done myself. However, once you've played the base game a couple of times, then Funko Games bring in the scenarios, which go everything from kind of capturing, capturing the flag to controlling certain territories in order to get points. And the idea is that once you're familiar with the rules, you can then crack on with the individual kind of miniature campaigns and scenarios that you can kind of play yourself. Um, kind of bringing that in with, you know, 
bringing in extra characters from other places, like, you know, let's see if Rose from the Golden Girls can kick Jeff Goldblum's ass. I have no idea if he could. Let's kind of find out. Let's put him on the team with a Tyrannosaurus Rex and Ellie Sadler and see what happens. And that kind of thing is very, very encouraging. The idea is that um, this is so that... This is so that, yeah, you've got your Batmans and you've got your Harry Potters, but they're bringing in kind of characters like the Jaws set, um, which to me is very interesting. I'm wondering, I hope, maybe if they're going to bring in something like a Back to the Future set, because to me that would be something else that would be kind of enticing. But, I mean, this is one of the rubs with, um, with Funkoverse, is that there's going to fall into two types of camp. You're going to be the type of person that wants to play this game because you want to play a decent skirmish game. You want to play something kind of different. You want to play something that's got like an IP attached to it. And the IP being attached to this does an awful lot for the game. In the kind of the same way that, um, you know, the Judge Dredd IP has, uh, has done some changes to like kind of like Wildlands quite recently for Osprey Games. The cynical side of it is that um, is whether or not you decide that you want to go kind of all in with this because um, these aren't cheap. I mean, if I was doing down kind of like a value, is it worth the money that you would pay in order to get kind of like this set which comes with kind of like your, you know, your, your, your characters here, your four characters? And the answer to that question is, is kind of like a yes. Because there's the replayability there, there's a double-sided map, the characters are good, the character. You're not going to sit there and go, I feel like I've wasted money. I think what you have to look out for is the kind of the longevity once you get to the point where um, you may be looking for other characters. It is relatively not, in it. it's not horrifically expensive, but it is still a pretty decent chunk of change to go out and get yourself another expansion. And you'll get other maps in this, and you'll get other tokens in this, and you'll get other scenarios in this, so it's definitely worthwhile looking. I mean, I don't know, because let's face it, if you're watching this, you've already decided, you've probably already been scouting around to see how many of the other sets that you can get your hands on, which is fair enough. And what I'm saying is, um, don't worry about thinking that you're missing out, I guess, if you're just wanting to stick with the one set, because you're going to have fun if you are going to be going out and collecting them all then be wary that you are going to be spending a reasonably big kind of chunk of change if you're going to kind of going to get all the the kind of the different sets um for me i wanted to be horrifically cynical about this whole setup i wanted to say that um it was a horrific cash in that the the rules hadn't been thought about that the kind of the components you know the while well, the funkos themselves a little funko pops were were decent the actual components themselves were fairly terrible, but this is obviously a company that's uh, kind of playing this for the long game because there's not really an awful lot here that hasn't kind of been thought about and uh, that hasn't been considered when they've been putting kind of everything together. And in, because of that, it kind of makes me interested in the other sets that are available. I would like to see what the kind of the various kind of the, the abilities are for Jaws, for instance. I would like to see what they've done with Batman, Harry Potter, and even kind of like the Kool-Aid guy, which I believe is going to be like in the US only. Um, but all in all, um, I'm surprised, I must admit I'm surprised. It's slightly deeper than I thought. I think this would be amazing if you were cracking it open for a night, um, because it doesn't play it doesn't take an awful long time to kind of play through the games if you don't want to. You could crack through kind of maybe three or four games in an evening. You'd certainly have an awful lot of fun with your friends. And I'm not just talking about some playing with the kids. There's a, there's a, with the abilities alone, there seems to be enough depth in here that's going to keep you going um, for a little while. So, yeah, Funkoverse. It's not that I didn't want to like it, but um, just, you know, just decide for yourself where you want to sit on this, really.
Um, are you going to be going all in? If you're going to be going all in, then is there enough difference for you to justify it? And potentially no. If you're going to be sticking to just the one set to see what it's like, I think you're going to be pretty pleasantly surprised by the type of game that you get. It's if you like Wildlands and stuff like that, then I think you'd probably enjoy this kind of just as much. Just as much. If you're looking for something that's going to go a bit more technical, it's probably a little bit below kind of what you'd be expecting from a game. If you're into your Funko Pops, you've already bought this. Let's face it, you've had this sitting on your shelf from your grey importer for like months haven't you? Um, but yeah, so that's Funkoverse from uh, the Funko Games Company. My name's Richard. This is We're Not Wizards. Remember, um, stay safe, roll CDs of my exclamation marks. Let's see if we can roll six of them. <gasps> we did! I'm not showing you the result. Make something awful. If you like what you've watched, drop us a like, drop us a subscription. But until the next time, Sorry.